Welcome back. Steve Arabato here. We are joined by our good friend, uh, Marjorie Perry, who is president and CEO, MZM Construction and Management. Good to see you, Marjorie. Good to see you always, Steve. How are you this day? Doing all right. By the way, Marjorie is a trustee of our not-for-profit organization. Let me uh, get that out of the way. But more importantly, she knows construction. She knows business. She knows management and getting things done. So in the age of COVID, as we do this program at the end of the summer 2020, how tough has it been? The construction side, if you're on the commercial side, has been strong. You know, we, we were always essential. We never shut down. Uh, uh, it truly was, if you were in the right place, the right time, you had some very, very serious best practices in place before COVID hit. Uh, most of the construction companies, like myself, are, continued on through this whole uh, COVID scenario. Yeah, you we know, did. we had Governor Christie on, and he said these things publicly as well, that Governor Murphy has not done enough to, quote, help small business, you say? I think that's a catch-22 statement. I think uh, some small businesses weren't prepared to even know how to get caught or how to be saved or how to get to the next level. You know, one of the things that, uh, Steve, you and I have talked about over time, about education, continuous education, and I've always talked to smaller businesses, build your relationships with your bank. If you didn't have a relationship with your bank and really strong financial people backing you up, great CPAs, great attorneys, and not even great, maybe just good, you could not apply right. for these loans. You had to be able to apply for these loans. So what you saw in the middle of this, and I don't know what he means by help small businesses, is that how do you go and lend money to someone that has maybe not this financial records that they need to see in order to say, okay, let these funds go towards you. Now, I'm not gonna say there wasn't some gamemanship in this. For sure there was. So, but if you weren't at the top of the food chain on your small business, yes, you paid a heavy price during this pandemic. Hmm. Marjorie, let's talk about let's talk about the digital divide in education. How much does it concern you? I think broadband now is a real big issue in some of our urban areas, and you can't choose between paying that to make sure that your children can do what they need to do, or you eat. Sure, it's a big concern because now we're looking at September where all these students will be learning online with what? Who's going to back them up with the tools that they need? Do they know how to log in? Do the parents know how to help them to log in? You know, uh, just before you and I went on the air, you know, a couple of questions, Marge, can you do this? Can you do that? Okay, I have an IT person on standby to support me in my efforts. Who has that in these homes, in these urban areas? And remember, these people are out of work now because they were the first to go because of the hospitality, travel industry, That's right. uh, maybe food packing. I, I, I don't see how the divide is going to do anything but get wider as we go along. Because this broadband thing is a big deal. Very big deal. We're taping at the end of the summer 2020. It'll be seen after that as well. And we'll see where we are at the schools. But just remember when we are speaking right now. Marcia, let me ask you this. You and I have also had countless conversations over the several decades that we've known each other and been friends about race, about racism. Um, some of them publicly, but a lot of them privately. So this series we're doing that you know very well uh, as a trustee of ours called Confronting Racism, particularly um, given the horrific murder of George Floyd on right. video. What does confronting, I mean, there's so many different aspects, but when I say confronting racism, you say what? Listen, I think everybody has a bias. I think people are racist against somebody that doesn't put a mask on. Let me just qualify what I mean by that. Or does. Or does have a mask on. I think that these tribal conversations that are going on now about racism, yes, racism truly exists. But what do we do if we're going to keep talking about racism versus how do we take a, a subjective process and make it objective. And that's through policy change. So I always say when people come to me now, I think they finally realize I was African American with all this Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> I, I thought I was the day before, but I always say, okay, now what? I've gone through bias. I've gone through gender discrimination. I've gone through called the N-word. I've been through all of that. 
And one of the things that I'm hoping for out of this conversation about racism, because it's not going to go away, is how do we pivot around it and make it work to our advantage, especially if you feel that you're a minority person that's been disadvantaged for so long. Now, you and I both know uh, affirmative action has been around for a very long time, so it's not a new conversation. And two, it's hard for people to retool in a dime on Black Lives Matter. And three, what does defunding the police look like? You still need your police departments in order to take care of everybody's community. So I, I, it's a mixed bag. And yes, the implicit bias and the racial bias truly exists. Uh, I always have a hard time of how do we take it from the streets to the lawmakers to implement it in policy. And that means higher wages, opportunity to grow, uh, maybe not there's a 7% cap on when you're doing affirmative action job. Maybe you could just go in and because you're the best business available and you don't have to go in as an MBE, WBE. You just bid the job direct on. So there's a lot of mind so minority owned business, women owned business, right? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But, but Margie, hold on one second. I, I'm curious about this. You, you've always spoken your mind. Yes. Never hold back. Yes. Do you get any pushback? within the African-American community about some of your views? We can eat our own in our community. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Sometimes we take each other out. Sometimes right in our own community, we, will, we, were, we're, we, we get so nervous or so territorial that we may take somebody out if we don't quite understand the strength or the value add of that person that's at the table. So if you have somebody of color that's graduated from Harvard and is trying to work in a community with somebody with a high school education, that person automatically becomes a threat in the community. They just can't see that we could work together and be of one accord at times. So yes, yeah, sometimes there's complete infighting in the community. Uh, sometimes that drives me more crazy than what I have to deal with on the outside. And other business leaders have said the same thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the uh, Kamala Harris situation, you know, where you have some yeah, African-Americans yeah. who want to focus on, okay, fine, she's not really African-American. What are you talking about? What? Where, where are you going to go with that? Let's what is focus that on her, Where does that go? Where does it go? <laughs> Let's focus on her qualifications. Not that she's black right. enough. So that, that yeah. sometimes bothers me a little bit. Yeah, by the way, we're doing this. Th this will be seen after the election, so we'll see whether she becomes the vice president-elect and the vice president. We'll see how things play out. But as always, Marjorie, thank you, my friend. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you so much for watching us. We'll see you next time. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, PSENG, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, Clean Energy Program, Johnson & Johnson, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, and by Valley Bank. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by New Jersey Monthly. In the fabric of America, they are the toughest threads. One of the first things they learned was the code that every service member lives by, leave no one behind. Now all of us need to live by it too, because some veterans are being left behind. 20 of them take their own lives every day. Learn how to be there for a veteran at betherefoveterans.com. Honor the code, be there, leave no one behind.